sports betting brother and hey, bring it up and thanks for stopping by. My name is Boyd. I'm a data analyst with Odds Jam and OddsJam.com, which is a betting tool to help you become a very sharp, profitable better. Now, people always ask, when's the best time to get my bet in? Should I should I try to do it right when the lines open up and right when the lines come out very, very early? And uh, the option is to wait till the very, very tip off, very, very last second. Um, there's goods and bads to both, and we're going to talk about how to optimize that ROI and how to uh, have a strategy to go into it to uh, help protect yourself and get the most out of your investment. So let's get going. All right, guys, let's get right into it. So the question here is, when's the best time to place my wager? When's the best time to place my bet? And that's a little bit of a difficult question to answer, but I'm going to try to break it down. Certainly, there's pros and cons to placing your bet early and also sometimes waiting till late. So let's tell let's tell you the reasons why, or give you the reasons why it might be a positive getting in early. So now right now it's about 1023 Mountain Time on Monday morning, and um, obviously this is tournament week. We have March Madness kicking off, and a very, very busy week. So lots of times people will find value by getting in early, and getting in early, you might find some lines. And so, for example, as we open up Odds Jam right now, we're seeing you have a 6.28% edge here, potentially playing over at uh, DraftKings and um, going with Duke on this particular game. But we also want to reiterate, this does meet the um, qualifications kind of how we hunt. And so what we mean by that is when we're hunting for good lines, hunting for good opportunities, uh, we like to see obviously the edge as high as possible. And if it's showing itself already to the point where it's under say 25 cents in market with, um, that's something we're interested in. And uh, so this is something that is, is right now at 22. So obviously minus 132. And I uh, subtract the, the plus 110, you get a, a 22. That's under 25 cents. And so that'd be a wager we would certainly consider and take a look at. Um, as you open up the game here, you can see the other sports books in the Colorado market. So getting in early on this looks to be like a good thing relative under knowing that with Duke's uh, following and public following, um, you can imagine this line is probably going to continue to rise. So that's what's one caveat that I put in here is um, consider what's going to happen potentially down the road. If it's if it's a Duke or a high high volume game, high volume team, you're going to see a lot of line movement potentially. If you've got two teams no one's ever heard of, you're probably going to have a lot less that are from way smaller markets. So consider the markets, 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 markets. Right now, it's saying over at DraftKings at minus 105, you can get Duke at minus 17 and a half. So. And then you can pop over to, to uh, your DraftKings account, get that fired up. and want to have all these open and have them all going uh, as you log in. So that's how you would do it right away quickly. Talk about the positives. Are you getting a, you know potentially good value? You've considered the market. You consider what could happen. And um, it meets your your hunting requirements, as I, I guess I would say, as I'm hunting for games and hunting for good opportunities. I want to make sure. So, again, in this case scenario, as you see, the market is continuously moving. This is a $0.29 cent, um, difference where it's a little bit out of where we want to be at the $0.25 cent difference. So, um, again, you, you kind of surf through these, see if you can find out some good games. And I'm on this all day, every day. I mean, I'm on this in the morning. And so when the question arises, you know, is there a better value morning, noon, or night, I think it falls into – um, that probably I had to tip the scales. I would, I would say, yeah, it's always better a little bit early. And here's why. Here's the secret of why. You can always go back over to DraftKings and once you, uh, well, downward, you, they sh they'll show you a button here to, uh, sell back your bet. It's almost like a stop loss in a, in a stock option. You can, you can, you know, hit a, hit, uh, a button to get refunded in many, many of their wagers. And so if that's something that uh, helps you with more peace of mind to protect that, you know, again, let's say you got in on this game here. Iowa minus 10, 20 cent difference over at DraftKings and things just went the other way. Something happened over the course of the next day or, who, day or two where you wanted to bail on that. That would be your option out. Okay, you could actually sell that and be just fine. So that's how I would go about the early bird hunting and kind of how you would manage that. And uh, those are some hopefully good good keys to help you understand that surfing early and shopping early, as long as you kind of stay in your discipline parameters, you have a little bit of a stop loss protection at the very end. So let's uh, move on to betting late and the positives and negatives of that. Okay, let's talk about betting later in the day, maybe even betting right up until tip-off or the puck drops or first pitch or kickoff, whatever the case. You literally wait to the very, very last second. Now, typically with NBA games, you know, this is where you're going to be watching and monitoring a lot of the injuries, a lot of the players as they sit out and take a workload. Uh, <laughs> 
workload uh, management, I guess, is what it's called now, where they, they'll sit out a few games. So what I typically do as well is look at the, the matchups and look at the game. Um, you can anticipate the schedule as well. Um, let me pull up something real quick for you. I want to show you a quick little tool that I use just for just for quick reference every once in a while. Hang on one second. Here's a, the quick little NBA grid I wanted to show you. And what this is a schedule, obviously, of, of the games. And so if you're going through here, you're going through the schedule, and you're saying, okay, uh, you know, Cleveland, uh, L.A., Denver, Philadelphia, things like that, you can pop over to the schedule real quick and just take a little gander to make sure you understood maybe what a team's going up against. Were they traveling last night? Were they traveling this morning? You know, what kind of logistically what's going through, um, you know, on those on those schedules so again back to the schedule here guys I, you know again we know everything is baked into the price of these sports books right but sometimes when you can maybe uh, dig a little bit just on some of the uh, fundamental side of things relative to uh you know players traveling here we got i, I noticed uh um let me get the clippers here they're at home on a monday at toronto on a wednesday <laughs> okay la to toronto um or i'm sorry it's cleveland went home and back to Utah, and then they got a couple of days here, but kind of a big gap before at Denver. Just just wacky times these players are traveling and living. So if you can use this sometimes to your advantage, maybe on first half bets, even full game bets, you got players taking time off, um, and kind of ask yourself, okay, if if you're a particular player, or maybe even you know star players, what are those nights that they maybe give you some load management and some time off, and therefore changing the game a little bit, kind of just reading the tea leaves a little bit. Sometimes this this helps you. So again, back to betting late though, betting coming in, you have to understand. Um, as you get in late, you lose some value in the lines. Maybe you lose, lose some value to the point spread or the total as it makes adjustments. So that would be a downfall. The, the good side of that is you might get more information relative to uh, injuries, relative to players sitting, things like that. So there is a bit of a benefit. Again, the fallout here is to sell back your position if you decide that uh, uh, prior to the game you locked in a certain price on a team. Maybe you got information, you know, you, you wanted to sell that back. You could. And usually it's not dollar for dollar, but I've noticed that when you're selling a game back, if you need to or have to, uh, lots of times you can get uh, just a little bit less than what you um, invested in. And it's probably a better idea potentially to take that if you're not 100% confident and sure. So that is another option there. But the value is definitely waiting till the most information comes in. But, but keep in mind, they've already got that baked in for the most part. Um, it's not their first barbecue. Okay, again, just kind of wrapping this up in a final final uh, piece of advice that I'm going to throw out here as far as the when's the best time to place my wagers. Again, I think the, the most important thing is to try to monitor and keep track of yourself as far as the um, – you know the the markets here as far as being in your in your parameters and what you want this is a good one here you get a little 20 cent value but you're taking the dog here over a circus so that's probably one i still would probably stay away from uh and in your edges you know as long as you kind of stay uh, disciplined i don't think it really matters as far as the time of the day because you have you have good choices and good options that are uh, presenting themselves for later as you get closer to game time so again not really seeing the i'd say if i had to, to lean towards i'd give the benefit to the early bird and um that's probably what i would do is continue to go on that uh, early bird, uh, you know, choice as far as you're, you're getting your, your wagers in and then monitoring it, you know, just stick close to monitoring it. And then finally, just understanding your market, you know, you understanding that certainly this uh, Norfolk State Baylor game is going to be a little bit different than, you know, say an NBA game or, or even a higher, higher uh, covered uh, college game especially with Duke this year, with Coach K's last year, et cetera, et cetera. So understand the markets, understand the, uh, the uh, um, I guess, volume of, of handle that's coming in and kind of the, the perception, the public perception, and uh, keep all those things in mind here as your choices are going forward.